Hello everybody and welcome to another live stream. It's been a little while since I went live in this group and it's mostly because we have been hard at work putting together a brand new experience that we are we've actually launched this week and the program is called Money Manifestation Reboot. And it's going to be a free program. We have been listening to everybody inside this group and been spending some time asking everybody inside this group what it is that you want help with in your manifestation journey. What can we do to support you to get the law of attraction to work in your life? And what do you want to use the law of attraction for? And it turns out many people in this group are looking to manifest more financial flow in their life and bring more money into the world by using the law of attraction. So today I want to share a story about how curiosity can bring you more financial flow. So before I get there, I want to quickly um, ask you a question. Is money something that you are looking to bring more of in your life? What does your relationship with money look like? Let me know in the comments below this video. And um, I would love to get a sense of exactly what those questions are and what your current money story is so that we can make sure that we shape the content inside this program to be directly tailored for you, our audience, and um, make sure that it's as meaningful as possible. Before I get into this analogy of curiosity and how you can use curiosity to bring financial flow into your life, I want to give you a quick analogy on how manifestation works. You may have heard the analogy that thoughts become things. And I want to give you an analogy of how this actually works in reality. I want you to think about different stages of manifestation where the first stage is what you think about a, a, a thought that you have. The second is you take that thought and you give it some meaning. You pass it through your own internal filters and you create a story around that thought that you choose to tell yourself. You tell yourself that story over and over again. And that story, the more you start to tell it to yourself, becomes what you believe. It becomes a belief. A belief is just a thought that you've thought over and over again. So you have the thought, you fabricate it into some sort of story, you tell yourself that story over and over again, and that story eventually becomes your belief, and your belief is what unfolds in the world around you into your reality. So those four steps are really the process of manifestation in how it works. So when someone says thoughts become things, that's how it works. You have a thought, that thought then gets wrapped in some story that you make up. That story gets told over and over again. It becomes something that you believe. And when you believe it, you start to see it in the world around you. That's why, and this is an analogy that I have, two people can have the same experience, but have a different story around it and have completely different viewpoints on the same thing. So this is the analogy that we have. You and I both go to a birthday party. I go to the party and I feel really awkward all night. I can't find my way with conversation. I can't feel the flow. The music wasn't really for me. It just wasn't a great, a great night. You attend the same party, same music, same people, same food, same experience. You chatted to amazing people. You met an amazing person. You got the opportunity to co-create some new opportunity. Whatever happens, the music was popping off you danced all night you enjoyed the food you got home you had one of the best nights of your life the next day we both meet and i ask you how was your party last night you have a very different experience based on the thoughts you had which then became your stories and then unfolded into your reality as me which i had different stories in my head and my reality of that same party was completely different and so how does this analogy of thoughts becoming things relate to curiosity and why can curiosity be such a superpower in the manifestation process. Here it is. Let's say, for example, you're wanting to manifest more money. You want more financial flow in your life. You want more money to flow into your world. It's pretty easy to see that there's more than enough money in the world. Some people have got a lot of money. You may not have enough. What's the reason that somebody else has got more money than you do? 
this is very inherently linked to our story and how curiosity plays into this is that if we have a money story that sounds like and then finish the sentence with whatever your money story sounds like money is hard to come by it's difficult to make money there's not enough money in the world when I win somebody loses when somebody else is winning that means I'm automatically losing those money stories will inherently be the stories that eventually manifest into your world as your reality and so what happens is when you have a story about anything in your life that you would like to change it's important to use the idea of curiosity to question what it is about that story that you'd like to change and the reason I say curiosity is important is when you hold a story that money is hard to come by that is your reality and that becomes what unfolds in your world if you want to change that story what happens you move into curiosity and as you start asking questions what happens is instead of that story becoming the truth that is your reality you start saying why don't I have enough money in my life why do other people have more money than me so you start to become curious and when you do that you open yourself up to be able to change your story if you hold that story to be true and that's it I can't make any more money because money is hard to come by that will be your reality but if you decide that you want to change something in your life and you move into curiosity and start asking questions about why this isn't the way that I want it to be in my life, what happens is your mind starts to think about other possibilities. Why don't I have money in my life? Okay, maybe it's because I have a weird relationship with money. Maybe I've been closed to money. Maybe I've been handed some story by society or my parents or my church or whatever the story is that's manifested in my world that has, been, that has got me to where I am at the moment. And as soon as you move from holding the story so tightly that money is hard to come by to one of curiosity, you move to a place where you are no longer a victim of your story, but rather the creator of your story. So when you start asking questions, you move to a space where you realize you're able to change the story by asking different questions. And when that starts to happen, you start to become more self-responsible, you become more self-empowered, you start to move into the inquiry about what could be different in your life and you open yourself up to a different story. So if you have a money story that you're looking to change or if you have a story about anything in your life that you're looking to change, whether it relates to manifesting relationships, your dream job, um, the place that you want to live in, whatever it is that you're looking to shift in your world and you feel like you're a little bit held back by your current story, move to a place of curiosity rather than letting that story that you want to change be true and the only thing that's true for you now is that story move to a place of curiosity start asking questions why why can't I find my ideal partner what would my life be like if I had unlimited wealth start asking those questions as a way to move your existing story into something that's open and malleable and uh, sort of available for change I would really love to see you inside our free program money manifestation reboot we are going to be deep diving over a series of videos where we're going to help you clearly identify what your current money story is. We're going to share the 24 abundance blocks with you. These are typical blocks that come up time and time again when people try and manifest financial flow in their life. And they're pretty common. They're things like um, feeling guilty about money, uh, the fear of success, um, the fear of numbers is one of them. If you are one of those people that too worried to look at your credit card statement, don't spend a lot of time on your bank statement going through those things because it feels like just too much of a problem to look at. That could be one of the things that's stopping financial flow coming into your life. And we're going to unpack all of these with you in this uh, Money Manifestation Reboot. Myself and my team have been working really hard on pulling this program together based on the, the feedback we've got from this group about our um, manifestation game plan which is our six phase process that you can go through we're going to teach you exactly how to go through each of these six steps clear your abundance blocks and make space to change your money story so that more financial flow can come into your life I've posted a link to the registration page for this free training uh, in the comments of this video we'd love to see you inside there and um, yeah let us know if you enjoyed this video and please share it on social media with anybody else that you feel might need some assistance clearing some of their, their money stories and making space for a new money story and as a result, more financial flow in their life. Take it easy. Sending you love from a beautiful, sunny Guatemala. Let me just quickly show you 
the beautiful day that we're having here. It's been rainy season here, but um, yeah, today it's just uh, it's opened up and the sun's come out and uh, super beautiful. Sending you love. Ciao.